we're fast forwarding now to the Annapolis Boat Show. The previous video was at the Newport Boat Show, and it's blowing about 25 knots right now and raining, so it's a good uh, way to get aboard the boat with not a lot of people. There's a couple items I wanted to show that I didn't show earlier. The boat has a, uh, a grill here, it's an electric grill, and it lifts up and uh, you can cook on it. It's 110, it's not gas, and then it retracts back into this position. This automatically turns off if you close the hatch. This will lift up and sit on the tripod. And then it pushes down to go back in. This is rather clever as well. This is available as a refrigerator, freezer, or a sink. Here we have a fridge or a freezer. To control the rewind winches, I have a switch here in and out to control a main sheet or Genoa sheet. Or I can go and push the buttons right next to the winch. Or I can use a manual override. The starboard helm, like on most of those, has the throttle, the tachometer, and windless controls. So just a quick little tour here. This boat has the Volvo 180 horsepower D4 turbo diesel, so that control is here. There are bow and stern thruster controls here, so I can easily set the boat sideways by one hand. Uh, controls for the winch, uh, controls for the electric furler up forward, my tachometer and smart gauge for my Volvo system, my up and down on my chain and my chain counter, and I have a uh, autopilot here, as well as my multifunction display. There are a couple other ways to do this, of course, and uh, the port station has a similar setup, but not the engine controls or the windless controls. I have to pardon the uh, paddleboard here. Just wanted to show you a table in the up position, table in the down position. This will flip out. There are drink holders here. These uh, go up and down, of course, and you can put the cushion out to make almost like a, a day berth. Underneath the floor here <coughs> is a life raft holder, and there's a valise in here with a life raft. Also forward is another hatch that has uh, access to the armature for the, the hatch itself and some additional storage. This is the only Genoa offered with an arch. It's a very handy way just to have access back and forth in the cockpit. You can have uh, a main sheet come down to the cockpit to a captive winch as well. But what this allows, and I don't have it set up now, and you can see it being rained on, is we can have a cover going completely across the cockpit with nothing protruding down below inside of it. This boat has the garage for the dinghy and this is the seating arrangement that comes with that. So there's a cushion here and of course I can sit here and be able to look right down the side of the boat. This is the view from about six feet tall looking through the Dodger. So I'm looking through glass, I'm not looking through the canvas. And also there's an easy shot right up the deck on this boat. Very nice visibility, making it a lot easier to handle with a couple. The side decks are wide, nice tall rails, easy access up forward. This boat has the freshwater wash down right here. You can also have a saltwater wash down. There's a manual bilge pump, a speaker for the uh, VHF, storage locker underneath it here. There's a D-ring right here for your tether. With this interior for offshore, this particular layout, we have an up and down berth here, of course, to show that earlier, but that's a great place for sea berths. We can put a leak cloth on the port side set T and a leak cloth on the starboard side uh, U-shaped set T. And we have the aft cabin, of course, too, and we can put a leak cloth in the middle if we needed to. Another potential sea berths are the forward cabins in this model. We're just forward of the mast, so we're still in a stable part of the boat. So we have quite a bit of offshore capability for sleeping. For offshore use, this would be the day head. It's easy to get to right by the companionway and uh, still in, a, in, a, in a sort of a midsection of the boat. I don't know about you, but I really like to cook offshore and have good meals for everybody. A lot of times I'll do a lot of preparation ahead of time. If I know I'm on a, uh, a two week journey, for example, uh, I'll uh, cook everything and put them in vacuum bags and freeze them. We have the capability of having uh, multiple freezers on this boat to do that. And then I just put it in a pressure cooker and off we go. But if I want to cook from scratch offshore, this is a good place to be. I'm right near the companionway. I can see everything. I've got lots of light. I've got a ventilator here. I've got a gimbaled stove with uh, the typical holders that you would expect. My sinks are here. They're deep. They're not going to splash all over the place, even on a 
drastic heel. I even have a dishwasher if I want to turn that on. Underneath the floor here we have the generator compartment. The later models have been modified to have two hatches here. This comes up and we have a 20KW Onan. That's a Cummins product. This also comes up as well. There's good access to the generator in its own, its own compartment and it has a manual start down here as well. Here's a better view of the generator compartment. Again, the whole thing lifts up. For offshore, I wanted to point out that you can make this hatch uh, lock in at the halfway position. You can also put it all the way up or all the way down. And again, that access uh, to uh, get to that control for that is in the cockpit if you ever need to work on it. The end space is good. I'm looking through the forward hatch, but there's a side door that's accessed through the bunk room that you can get, climb right into the engine room space. Here we see the inside view of where that door is. It's a man door, you can get in. Everything you would need to get to is all in here and easy accessed. Also aft, through the aft head, is another door. Here's the view through the bunk room door. And you can walk right in here and get to anything you want. Also on a long offshore journey, it's nice to watch the movies. And there are plenty of places to sit to be able to see this TV. The camera's point of view is from the set T on the other side, and you can have two or three people there and easily have a few people here on the U-shape uh, and be able to see the large screen TV we've got playing. Another advantage is that the TV faces forward, so that light is not going to affect the helmsperson. person. <laughs>